Good morning. Welcome to Truth for Today. This is Dai Qing Yuan, your host and teacher, pastor of Abilene Bible Church. Today we're continuing our study of I Endure, Biblical Principle of Perseverance. I Endure is a part of the large series called I Christian, in which we have studied from the Bible and built up biblical philosophy for Christian life. We have studied these topics till now. I believe, I confess, I pray, I worship, I fellowship, I give, I baptize, I Eucharist, I study, I obey, I witness, I disciple, I member, I serve, I citizen, I home, I Christmas, I work, I enjoy, I rest, I love, and now I endure. This is the, uh, number 22 of the total 24 mini-series in I Christian. Okay. We have just finished I love. One key element of love is endurance. Okay? Because the song of love in 1 Corinthians 13, it begins with patience and ends with endurance. Love has a key element, which is patience and endurance and perseverance. And if you don't have these characteristics, you might give up a lot of good and essential things. Um, for example, you might give up God when time is hard. You might give up, give up yourself when failing at tests. You might give up others when failing if your expectations. You might give up knowing God more, thinking you have arrived. You might give up serving God and others, thinking that you have done enough. And then if you have give up, given up, um, the above things, then you would have missed the word from the Lord when you meet him. Welcome, thou faithful servant. You see, the Lord did not want us to be mighty necessarily. He wants us to be faithful. Okay. We have begun studying the, the biblical usage of the words for patience. We have learned uh, studied the Old Testament usage of the word patience. It was very rare, and uh, uh, however, it did appear. Patience is slow to anger, like God, who has anger toward sin. However, he is slow to anger. Um, he would not throw out and uh, react and punish um, immediately and quickly and for, you know, and, and especially he will not overreact. Slow to anger is the word patience. Uh, um, patience of spirit is long spirit. Okay? Slow to anger literally means long nostril. Okay? So patience of spirit is long spirit. Okay? Long in spirit means patience. Okay, now we are going to st study the New Testament usage of the word patience. Okay. Um, in Greek, the word is makrothumio. It means to be patient, to have patience, to wait patiently, and to uh, delay uh, for a long time. So makro is big, uh, and thumio is suffering. So long suffering, I guess. It's a big suffering. Um, that's um, patience. For uh, We have seen in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 23 to 27. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle account with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his lord commanded him to be sold, along with his wife and children and all that he had and repayment to be made. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And the lord of that slave felt compassion, and released him, and forgave him the debt. Okay. And continuing, But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe. 
So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what has happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Continue. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you, also, should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord, moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. His heavenly Father will also do the same. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you, if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. Okay, so that is one of the last. Um, how would say um, parables that Jesus gave to. Uh, humanity before he left the earth. He, he said a lot when he was in the temple in the last uh, week, the first three days of the Passion Week. Okay. From Monday, I mean, he had a triumphal entry on Sunday. He had Monday through Wednesday, he was doing teaching in the temple, uh, speaking many parables. And then uh, at the end of Wednesday, he gave the um, Olivet Discourse, prophesying that the temple would fall within one generation, okay, in 40 years, which we know now from 33 to 73, that's 40 years. Well, uh, if you come back from 73, seven years of tribulation, that would be 66. People were expecting Jesus to come back in 66. He did not. And then um, the Jewish people rose up against Rome in 66. And their resistance or their rebellion is called the first rebellion of, um, um, against Rome, first Jewish rebellion against Rome. It lasts for how long? Seven years. When did it end? 73. Okay. What happened in the middle? In 70, the temple fell. Okay, so uh, Jesus, during his Passion Week, in the first three days, he gave a lot of parables. This is one of those. And uh, um, he compared the kingdom of heaven to a king, who is God, apparently. He had many slaves, servants, okay? And uh, for one slave, who was very rich, okay? And uh, he owed uh, the, the, uh, the master 10,000 talents, okay? That's unimaginably mm, much money, okay? And uh, a talent, I think, is 32 kilos of gold. I mean, um, so that's a, a lot of money. Anyway, 10,000, that's a lot of money. Um, this, well, the, the exact number doesn't matter. What n matters is uh, the impression that uh, this one was extremely blessed, but he was mismanaging. He was living extravagantly, so he owed this much money to his master. And then um, the master, who is God, demanded the money back and sent this person to jail. However, when this slave begged God, begged the master, have patience with me, macro through me, through mail, okay, which means patient, have patience, have patience with me, and I will repay you everything, okay. Um, in, literally, it means uh, give me a long term so I pay you back, not immediately. And then the Lord felt compassion, okay? He felt his pain, uh, and he released him and forgave him the debt, okay? Um, if the person forgiven was in character, okay, identified with the forgiver, with the master, he would forgive others because no, he would have compassion with others too, okay? But what he did is he went out and looked for his um, fellow slaves, and one owed him a hundred denarii. A denarii is a day's day wage, so a hundred denarii is 
it's just very little money, okay? But he seized him and choked him and says, you know, pay me back what you owe and throw that person in jail. So uh, even that person pr prayed, give me patience, give me some long time, long term um, expectation, you know, give me a, some time, I, I will repay you. But then he doesn't, doesn't punish him. So when the Lord heard this, the Lord says, you are a, <laughs> you are a heartless, wicked person, okay? I had mercy on you, and you should have mercy on your fellow slave, okay? In the same way, I had uh, mercy on you. So then he was, um, well, punished heavily. So Jesus at the end says, the, uh, for each of you, okay, God, my Father, who is in heaven, will also do the same. Okay? If you do not forgive your brother, from your heart. Okay. So what happened with the first slave is that he is thinking rationally. He is thinking with only his mind, but not his heart. His mind says, I need to pay back to my Lord. Okay? He forgave me, but I, I want to prevent this situation. I must accumulate some wealth, um, so I'm going to get back everything I could from others. What he did is actually he borrowed money, he used his Lord's money, he didn't invest it, he lent it to others, and, uh, and then and couldn't get it back. And now he said, I'm going to get, get it back. So it is, uh, from rational point of view, it is no need. He has no need to get this money back because he has already been forgiven. But he is thinking, living in fear or greed, you know, fear is living in the past and greed is living in the future, uh, or anxiety is living in the future, but only you have peace, you're living now. So he's not living in now, okay? He's living in the past and the future. So he says, I want to get as much money as, as I can from anybody that I have a claim on. And then he is in character opposite to his masters, to the one who forgave. And uh, uh, therefore, that forgiveness could be withdrawn, okay? Um, and of course, I think these, um, specifically, Jesus was talking to the Jewish people of his day, okay? That um, they have received a lot from the Lord, their God, Jesus' Father. And uh, they um, owe a lot to God. And uh, they could not pay back, but God has compassion. God forgave them and they must change their character to forgive others. In other words, become Christians. Okay? They need to um, believe in Jesus and uh, to be changed, to become like Jesus in character, in forgiveness, in love, and in broadening up, uh, in love, expanding love, okay? from the Jewish race to the Gentiles. That's the spiritual kingdom of God, the church. And if they don't do that, if they don't forgive others, if they only re remember that the Gentiles did bad to them, they forget that they did bad to Gentiles too. And then um, they're going to be punished heavily. Okay? So I think that's a specific uh, message. But the word patience is in there. And patience means um, give me a longer time. Okay? Um, okay, that's the New Testament usage. One example. Another example, makrothumia, same word. Patience, long-suffering. In Galatians um, 5, 22 to 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Uh, Galatians is a very important book. Um, it was the first, um, first pastoral epistle written by Apostle Paul. Okay. He wrote this after his um, first missionary journey, uh, mostly to Galatia. Galatia actually is, later became Gaul. Okay, uh, Celtic, it's the same group of people. They came from the north. Uh, some people went west to 
to Gaul or today's France and some went to Ireland and Scotland. They became the Celtic people. Some went to Asia Minor and they are called, uh, they formed a province. It's called Galatia. Okay? It's, a, it's a Gallic people. And uh, they gradually were Romanized because they were barbarians. They came into the, the civilized and the Greco Roman world and they were Romanized and civilized. And uh, Paul, he um, in his first missionary journey, he went from Antioch, uh, his home church. Um, there's an international church there of all races, all uh, classes, you know, all um, cultures. It's just it's great um, church. He, they sent their best, two best teachers, you know, Paul, Apostle Paul at that time, still Saul, and uh, and Barnabas. Barnabas. Barnabas at that time was the leader of the team. Out to they went first to. Um, to Cyprus, okay, and there they got to know their governor, uh, um, whose last name is Paulus, okay. And they um, fought a spiritual journey, and then Paulus believed in Jesus. Then Paulus sent them to Galatia, okay, because he has a brother there. He sent them to evangelize with his brother. So that's why um, Paul uh, went to Galatia, and there he founded churches there, um, and these people. There are Jews and there are Gentiles, but more Gentiles believe in than the Jews. Okay, you see the Jews, they wanted the physical kingdom. They wanted the the, the full kingdom that had having the physical element, with the son of David ruling as the king of kings, lord of lords. That he is going to be the emperor of the, all the earth. Okay, he's going to conquer all the nations and he's going to make. Israel or Judea, the first nation, uh, and they will be privileged. They want this um, picture of fulfillment of God's promise, which was God's picture. However, in the New Testament time, God says the picture is different. Uh, God want, does not want to conquer the nations with force, which will make them believe with fear. That does not generate love. So God will use the Holy Spirit to attract the elect. And they will believe in God, and they will believe in Jesus. And they will join. They will love Jesus for, for his sacrifice for, for them, uh, which uh, they are not related. But um, that makes the grace greater. And they will join because they accept God's love. They will join God's family. That's the church. The church will become spiritually the bride of Christ. Okay, so that is God's eternal purpose. And by the way, Israel, Israel will be restored, but that's at the end time after the church age. And uh, that's uh, called the seven years of tribulation. And they have to go through such a great uh, suffering, which they brought themselves. Okay, they're going to create this guy who's called the Antichrist uh, to rebuild the temple. And um, yes, they will rebuild the temple. However, after that, the Antichrist is going to demand to be worshipped as God. <laughs> and if you don't, you get persecuted. I think that's when the, uh, the Jews will turn around and accept Jesus. Okay. So this is the biblical prophecy about the future. So God certainly is patient with Israel who rejected Jesus. God still will save a remnant of them at the end. And uh, um, for those who have believed in Jesus and they have received the Holy Spirit, okay, the reason they believe in, the, in Jesus is because they have been elect of God before the foundation of the world, and uh, also because they have been regenerated by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit recreates, rebirth okay, their spirit. Okay, you have three parts. God is Trinity, we are Trinity, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? God rebirthed our spirit. Okay, and then the Holy Spirit lives in our spirit. And now this spirit does not sin. Therefore, the Holy Spirit can live in there. Okay? And then as we let our mind, our soul, and our will, and our soul listen to the Holy Spirit, our conscience is already re revived. And then we will condemn our sins and agree with God and be changed by God. And gradually we are becoming sanctified. And then even through our body, others will see the life of Christ and will be attracted to the loving God. Okay, so the the church, uh, each member has the Holy Spirit living within 
his own spirit, okay, the personal spirit, and the the spirit generates fruits, okay. The sp Holy Spirit is um, uh, is always related with the life tree of life, the the tree of the, the, the living water, and it's all for the producing of fruits, okay. And uh, uh, Jesus said he's a true vine, and uh, we need to be abiding in him. Uh, that means connected, letting the life juice flow, and basically that means being filled with the Holy Spirit. For our connection with Jesus today is through the Holy Spirit. Okay, and if you let the Holy Spirit fill you, connect with Jesus. Okay, then you're going to produce fruits. The fruits are um, first of all characters. Okay, that we will have love. Okay, we. Uh, God loves us, we recognize our own value in God, then we love God and we love others. We don't hope, store up love, we give out, we become a channel of love. And because we have the Holy Spirit, we can have a source of love within us so, too. We have joy, and joy is more than happiness, because happiness depends on happiness, whatever happens. And joy is not. Joy is simply from within, from above, and it's um, you just... Um, joyful and for being a child of God, an heir of salvation, a fellow um, ruler of the kingdom of God in the future. And none of them is deserved, but you enjoy being, um, being chosen, being saved, and um, being sanctified. And you just have joy and you have peace. You're living now. You don't live in anxiety, which is living in the future for not having enough, and or in fear, which is you know, you're losing what you have. Okay, so you, you have peace, you're living now, okay, and, and this, at this moment, and you have patience, okay. Patience is you have long-term perspective. You give time, give opportunities, second, third, fourth chance to other people because God has given the same for you, okay. And then you are not like the other, the, 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 the ungrateful uh, slave who had been forgiven, but he does not forgive. Okay, he does not have patience with others. Okay, and you are like your Lord, who is patient and forgiving. And then you have kindness. Uh, you treat others kindly, um, uh, with 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 love, with grace, uh, and um, and because you recognize everybody has God's image in them, and you, you regard other people is to regard God, give regard to God. You have goodness. You try to do good to others, to satisfy the need of others, because God has done this to you. Even before you have turned to be a believer, God has given you sunshine and rainfall, even for the good and wicked. Okay, and then you have faithfulness. You will stick to it. You have a stick to itness. Okay, you will not easily give up. You will obey and believe and and, and follow and serve. And in in long term, this is um, faithfulness. Okay, you have faith in your God. You believe that He will get things done. You're just following His order, and then at the end, He will accomplish these things, okay? And um, as long as you live in God's will, you, you, you have faith in the right God, and then God will lead you to do the right things successfully, okay? You have gentleness. Um, you, you're kind and gentle, okay? Gentle is soft, uh, and, and, and you don't, you know, bully people. And you have self-control. This is the last thing, okay? Self-control is the last of the sanctification that comes to us. Uh, driving uh, not over the speed of the lim uh, speed limit <laughs> is one of the self-control. You know, usually, I say my right foot. You know, sanctification sanctification from comes from above to below. So my right foot is the last place where sanctification arrives. That's because I used to speed a lot. I get one ticket average per year. Until recently, I kind of uh, gave that up. <laughs> Um, against such things, there's no law. These are all good things, and there's no law against this. You can be abundant, overflowing this. Uh, and patience is one of those, okay? And you can have as many as you, you can, okay? Um, and there are other places in the New Testament that talk about the, the uh, patience. For example, e Ephesians 4, 1 to 2. Walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called with all humanity, 
uh, with all humility and gentleness, with uh, patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. Okay, I often find Christians, especially those who know a little theology, tend to be um, very critical of others. You know, if they have a little difference in theology, they tend to be you know intolerant. I think that is a sign of immaturity. Okay, have patience and show some tolerance. Tolerance is not tolerance for sin. It's within the realm of of uh, orthodoxy. There are tolerance for different opinions. Okay, Hebrews six twelve said, so that you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. There are many among us who had demonstrated faith and patience, and uh, they have ministered to us, and they have inherited their promises. They will be rewarded. They will have their glories. So we should be imitators of these great people. Okay? Do not be sluggish. Do not be slow you know, in work, but uh, look up to God, look up to Christ, and look up to the great people, faithful people, and patient people God has put among us. Imitate them so that we might develop our faith and patience and be rewarded too. In Jesus' name, amen. God is great and God is good. May God be praised in the year of the Lord, 2018. God is love. He demonstrated love through the first creation, giving us the universe, the earth, the rain, and the harvest, providing the necessities for our physical life. He demonstrated more love through the second creation, giving us His Son, Jesus Christ, whose death paid for our sin and whose resurrection gave us the hope of eternal life in love and holiness. On behalf of Truth For Today TV Ministry and the Abilene Bible Church, we thank God for giving us the opportunity to serve the people of West Texas in Abilene and the towns within 100 miles for nearly 60 years. We will continue the service of teaching God's Word, making the infinite truth truable in size, so that you may grow in grace and truth till you become the full image of Christ. Jesus said to his earliest disciples, Come, and you will see, and then follow me. The disciples told others, Come and see. We are doing the same introduction of you to Christ, your God and Redeemer. You come and see, then you will know that following Him is the best decision in your life. Please remember that this ministry is viewer-supported. Do as God leads to pray and give, so that many more can hear the truth made apparent. Have a wonderful new year, be in God's grace and be God's grace. In Jesus' name, amen.